This film has been made to show the inexperienced scout leader a little about how to conduct a camp, what's involved, and of course, how much fun it can be. Leading a scout camp. Probably the key thing to keep in mind when leading a scout camp is organisation. If you're organised, it'll be easy and everything will fall into place. Have your troop council help map out a program with specific activities planned for each day of the camp. Plenty of activities that provide challenge and variety for the boys. Try to find a campsite that fits with your basic program. Take your PLs along to check out the campsite and then finalise your program. Work out the costs of the camp and send off form of approval for the parents to sign. Make sure you're aware of any allergies or medical problems any of the boys may have. Have the patrols check and repair gear well before the camp. Buy the food, pack the gear and you're ready to go. Parent transport is easiest. When choosing a site for a camp, there are certain things to look for. A fresh water supply close to the camp is essential. Plenty of dead wood for the fire, fallen branches, twigs and leaves for kindling. The site should be free from flooding and not in a gully. It should have access to sunlight while still providing shade for the tents. Look for good grassy soil that won't turn to mud if it rains. Firm enough to hold a tent peg, but soft enough to sleep on. Upon arrival at camp, everyone should change out of their uniforms into whatever clothes they feel comfortable in. Uniforms are put away in a safe place. And don't forget footwear. Any kind of shoes that provide protection for feet in the bush are recommended. The first thing to build is the latrine. This is simply because it's the first thing that's needed. The trench should be one metre long, 30 centimetres wide and 40 centimetres deep. The dirt is piled to one side with a trenching tool to cover after use. The walls should be hessian or canvas and the whole thing covered by a tent fly to keep the rain off. Don't forget a hand basin for washing hands. Next is the store tent. Supplies and equipment should be placed in the shelter of the store tent while the rest of the camp is built. Now the patrol tents. There are different sorts of tents. Kookaburras are putting up a ridge pole A-frame tent. Looks like Wombat Patrol have got the right idea. This is an auto tent. These have the advantage of being light to carry and fast to put up. Which means they can now go and help the cookers who are having a little difficulty. If it looks like rain, it might be an idea to dig trenches along tent sides. Next comes the kitchen tent. Keep two buckets filled with water as fire buckets in the kitchen. Finally, the dining shelter fly. A nice shady position amongst a clump of trees is a suitable site for a dining shelter. It is important that the cooking fire comply with local fire regulations. A popular and practical fire is the trench fireplace. It should be up to a metre long and about a spade's width or so wide and half a metre deep. Clear all flammable material three metres around the trench and be sure there are no tents or trees nearby. The wet pit 
is for disposal of cooking and washing up wastewater. Dig a hole around 400 millimetres square and 600 millimetres deep. Line the bottom with pebbles and cover with a thatch of interwoven twigs, ferns and leaves. The dirty water is poured through, the thatch collecting the scraps while the grease congeals on the pebbles and the relatively clean water seeps away. At the end of the day, the thatch is burnt and a new one put in its place. Build gadgets, handy and practical devices built from wood and string will make the camp more comfortable. A dishpan tripod is a must. A tea towel clothesline. A shoe rack. Whoops, that deck chair could do with some more work. It's good to have a parade ground in a nice central spot. You can use a tree for a flagpole or build a traditional flagpole. A round lashing to hold the poles together. A square lashing for a cross piece. Use a clove hitch to tie the guy ropes on. Pull it up and use rolling hitches to attach the guys to the pegs. Well, the campsite's complete. This is a typical scout camp with a centrally located parade area surrounded by the patrol sites about 40 metres apart. The latrine is a short distance away, but not too close. sing song. And night time is the ideal time for wide games. Games that involve stalking or capturing bases, like Spotlight or Releaso, are always a lot of fun. Why not invent your own? Oh, looks like cookers are up early. In the morning, sleeping things should be aired for a couple of hours. The boys should have a good wash at least once a day. Set up a bush shower. Or at the very least, make sure they have a swim. Uh, please, no soap in lakes or rivers. Other fun activities you could do are pioneering, using ropes and ladders to build all sorts of things. A flying fox is lots of fun. Building towers, bridges, lookouts, obstacle courses are all good patrol projects. Or get them to design their own creations, like uh, whatever that is. Camp is the ideal spot for practicing emergency stunts or doing some real first aid and don't forget the first aid kit. During a quiet moment on the camp, get the boys to help run a scout's own, a short non-denominational service. The camp is a good place to put into practice skills such as judging the height of trees, the width of rivers or the distance across mountains. Get experience tracking and stalking, 
How many tracks can be recognised? Or try sketching. Just the place to teach them how to fish. Camp is a great spot to go exploring. Go on a hike. Or just check out the bush. All good things must come to an end. Packing up camp is just as important as setting it up. The first thing to dismantle is the kitchen tent and the dining shelter. Then the patrol tents. A good trick is to pull the peg out at the same time as removing the guy ropes. Then dismantle the latrine and finally the store tent. Make sure that the fireplace, the wet pit and any trenches are properly filled and that the turf sods are relaid so that the grass will grow again. It's important to clean and restore the site so that no one can tell a camp has been there. Well, that looks like everything. We've just got time for a troop photo. All right, you lot, get ready. Having set up a good camp, had a terrific time and cleaned up properly, the troop will be able to enjoy a sense of achievement and pride. And with every camp you take, you'll feel a little more confident at running them. And the kids will be clambering for more. Hey Skip, when's the next camp? <laughs>